Boba Fett, the original bounty hunter, the original Mandalorian. Boba Fett first appeared in the holiday special back in 1978. Ah yes, the greatest piece of Star Wars cinema to ever grace our screens. So you can imagine 1978 being a long time ago. There's a long history of Star Wars games where he makes an appearance. So strap yourselves in, we're going back in time, possibly before you were born, before I was born anyway. This is Boba Fett's history in Star Wars games. Oh, and please let me know if I miss anything. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> we start things off in 1991 with Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. This game basically allowed you to play through the film on the Nintendo Entertainment System, or the NES. You played as Luke, could fire a blast, a pistol, use Luke's lightsaber, ride a Tauntaun, and then had to face Boba Fett on Bespin. And Boba actually uses his jetpack here, even though he never used it in Empire. So I guess it's not completely film accurate. <laughs> he'd also drop bombs and fire his blaster, but then after you eventually defeated him, he'd take off in Slave 1 with Han Solo, and you'd get to jump in your X-Wing and chase him down. Defeating Slave 1 would cause the ship to explode, but wait, wasn't Han Solo on board? <laughs> oh no, okay, he's fine. You get a message from him when you land back down on Cloud City. For 1991, though, I imagine this was pretty epic. Getting to fight both Boba and then chase Slave 1. It's back then, this is groundbreaking stuff. This game's nearly 30 years old. And speaking of groundbreaking, next in 1993, we have one of the most memorable Star Wars games there is. Ready for this? Star Wars Chess. This game has more dismemberment than Jedi Fallen Order. Yoda makes stormtroopers turn their blasters on themselves and blow their heads off. How crazy is this? Vader can cut the limbs off C-3PO, kind of undoes all that work he did when he was a kid. Going from this to this. And Boba Fett is the bishop, although there's two of him. He's both bishops for the Empire. I mean, the rebels get two C-3PO's for their bishops, so I guess it's not that bad. What do you take, C-3PO or Mandalorian? Definitely Boba. Next up, also in 1993, is Super Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back for the Super NES. Similar to the other Empire Strikes Back game I mentioned before, this is a 2D platformer where you play through the events of the film. You once again face off against Boba on Bespin, although this time as Chewbacca, which I guess is closer to what actually happens in the film. Boba can once again use his jetpack, fire his blaster, and even use his jetpack rockets as a step up. But Wait, there's more. Once he's defeated on the ground, he goes and jumps in Slave 1 and comes right at you. Like, you don't even get a chance to get in your own ship. You just have to face Slave 1 from the ground and defeat Slave 1 from the ground. Obi-Wan got wrecked in Attack of the Clones. Have no idea how he survives this. But Chewbacca's got it covered. All right, we're finally going 3D. In 1995, we have Star Wars Dark Forces. The first person shooter. You play as Kyle Katarn and have to face Bobo, who's been hired to capture you. He stays in the air the entire time shooting down at you from above. I'm pretty sure he only has the one attack and will stay in the air evading your blasts and raining down fury from above until you eventually kill him. Yep, you can kill Boba Fett and he's lying there on the floor, a dead Boba Fett. I'm really looking forward to getting into the games where you can actually play as Boba Fett. That's coming soon. Oh, and Boba is also in Dark Forces 2, the sequel to this game. You can only play as him in multiplayer and I'm pretty sure you can use a lightsaber as well, which is kind of fun. Next is Star Wars Jedi Adventure for the R-Zone portable gaming console. Apparently you face Boba Fett in this game, although it's kind of hard to tell, but this here is what I call groundbreaking stuff right here. Next in 1996 is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. This game is set between Empire and Return of the Jedi, and you play as Dash Rendar and face Boba Fett on a moon of the planet Gaul. And this is easily the most advanced, capable version of Boba we've seen so far. He's able to use his rockets, his blaster, and his jetpack to fly around and maintain the high ground. You know how it is. But once you defeat him, he'll try and escape in Slave 1, which you can also damage and prevent from taking off. Slave 1 in these games really doesn't seem like that strong a ship. Like, you're always just taking it down from the ground. In 1997, there was Yoda Stories, the desktop adventure game. Boba's here somewhere. He'll charge you 10,000 credits to hunt for Yoda. John Tron made a video about this game you should check out. Man, 1997 was an incredible year for Star Wars games because it's the year we got Star Wars Monopoly. This game plays exactly like Monopoly, except you're buying Star Wars planets, cities, ships, instead of streets and utilities. And you'd also get to watch clips from the films as you went along. But I think Boba's pretty chill in this game, doesn't do much 
bounty hunting. It's just basically Galactic Conquest on the Monopoly board. I wonder if you can buy a Mandalore in this game. I don't think you can, but that'd be cool. Reclaim it back from the Empire. 1997 was also the year that brought us the game lots of people call the worst Star Wars game ever made. One of several anyway. Masters of Terrace Carsey, a Star Wars themed fighting game, which in theory sounds great. It's basically Mortal Kombat for Star Wars. The game allows you to face off against all your favorite Star Wars characters like Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, Arden Lin, Thok, Hor. <laughs> This guy's pretty cool though, Tusken Raider, you know. But seriously, this game, controls are clunky and unresponsive, some characters have lightsabers, but to use them you have to perform a combo move, and to my knowledge, this is the first time we actually got to play as Boba Fett in a video game. Boba Fett, I guess, is okay, he mainly punches and kicks his opponent, but he can also briefly use his jetpack, his blaster sometimes also. You're pretty much seeing all there is to this game right here. That, that's what it is. Star Wars theme fighting game. Boba Fett knows how to kick. Next, in 1998, is Star Wars Jedi Knight Mysteries of the Sith. And here, Boba Fett actually appears in the secret Bespin showdown level. This isn't included in any standard copies of the game. You basically need to know how to mod the game to play this level. But it's a fully scripted and completed level. The game down obviously put it in there as a little easter egg for people to find. Back in 98, this was fun stuff, crazy. He plays Luke Skywalker attempting to rescue his friends on Cloud City and in the hallways we'll find our Mandalorian foe, Boba Fett. He doesn't use his jetpack or anything like that, he's actually firing a standard Stormtrooper E11 here as well and it doesn't take that long to kill him. Man, so many games we can kill Boba Fett. Okay, next is Star Wars Rebellion, the real-time strategy game also from 1998. Boba can be called in as a reinforcement in this game as far as I'm aware of. And also in 1998 is Star Wars Trilogy Arcade, the 3D rail shooter with a Boba Fett mission on Tatooine. Boba flies around you shooting his blaster while you play as Luke and deflect his blasts. Hey, at least he's not getting up close and personal in this one like he did in the film. Completely gives away his ranged advantage and Luke just chops his gun in half. But it makes no difference. The result is the same. Boba ends up in the Sarlacc. Where he belongs. Let's be real. It's where he belongs. Next is X-Wing Alliance, released in 1999, where Boba Fett appears as an easter egg. There's a ship in this game that looks like Slave 1, but isn't Slave 1. It's just the same model of ship, the same with the Millennium Falcon, this isn't the Millennium Falcon, but on one of the training levels, if you're quick enough, you can actually find Boba Fett Slave 1 in your targeting systems. It'll come up here, but before you can get close, Boba Fett will jump to light speed. Now, apparently, Boba also appears in Star Wars Math, Jabba's Game Galaxy, but I haven't seen him in this one so just thought I'd include it in the list anyway. Let me know if you know where he is in this game. He is, however, in Star Wars Demolition from the year 2000. Now, this game is basically Demolition Derby for Star Wars. You ride around in an arena and take out as many other vehicles as possible. Only thing is, Boba doesn't have a vehicle. He uses his jetpack, even though all the other characters have their own vehicles. There are weapon upgrades and pickups and stuff like that. Another one of those Star Wars games that's gone down in history as one of the worst ever, but hey. Next in 2001 is one of my favorite worst Star Wars games. It's Star Wars Super Bombad Racing, the Mario Kart knockoff that's not half as good. Anyway, all the characters in this are from The Phantom Menace except for Boba and you need to use a cheat code to unlock him. He's a secret character. And he gets to pilot the Slave 1 with Boba's giant head sticking out of the top. What a game this was. Gameplay still holds up today. It's actually, it's not that bad. It's, it's okay. You know, it's a, it's, some, it's a fun time with friends. Need a remaster of this, actually. Now, also in 2001 was Rogue Squadron 2 Rogue Leader, which for the first time allowed you to properly fly Boba's Slave 1. And it even has a detailed cockpit interior. Back then, I imagine this was pretty groundbreaking. I mean, even now, this is so cool. I don't think Boba would ever get himself involved in a large-scale fleet battle like this, but the fact you can do this in a game, I like it. It's pretty good. Next is Star Wars Galaxies, the MMORPG released in 2003, and in this game you can find Boba in Jabba's palace along with several other locations, and he could actually give you quests to go on and complete. I don't think you could play as him in this game, you'd customize your own character and you could play as a Mandalorian, but not as Boba Fett. Also in 2003 was Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. Enemy, featuring a Boba Fett boss fight on Ord Mantell. Here, Boba could use his jetpack, his blaster, and even his flamethrower if you got too close. You can defeat Boba in Jedi Academy, but you can't kill him. He'll jetpack away.
way into the night, true Boba Fett style, going back to sleep in his Sarlacc pit. All right, this next one I have to say is pretty cool. Star Wars Flight of the Falcon for the Game Boy Advance. You'd get to pursue Boba Fett Slave 1 through the buildings of Cloud City in the Millennium Falcon, and Boba would even fire backwards at you like we saw Slave 1 do in The Mandalorian. Star Wars Battlefront 2 had such a huge impact on Star Wars gaming. Still to this day, there's never been a game that captures that same magic we saw in the original Battlefront 2. It still feels unique to this day. Boba was of course a playable character, probably the most advanced version of Boba we'd seen at this point. Boba wielded his EE3 burst fire blaster rifle, his flamethrower, wrist rockets and dead packs, and he's voiced by Tamura Morrison. Video, let's get this over with. And there's a story mission in this where you lead the Empire as Boba Fett on Kamino in a mission to destroy the cloning facility and any surviving clones where Boba was born. You actually go and kill all of Boba's brothers. This is some messed up stuff. I love it. It's so cool. Such a good story mode in this game. 501st Journals. In 2006, we saw another game that had changed Star Wars gaming forever. Lego Star Wars The Original Trilogy. Well, technically Lego Star Wars 1 changed gaming, but this is Lego Star Wars 2, but this is the first time we ever got to play as a Lego Boba Fett. And there's also the Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS version where you can fight Boba on the sail barge, and pretty sure he also eventually ends up in the Sarlacc pit. Next is Star Wars Lethal Alliance, also in 2006 for the Nintendo DS and PSP, that one where you play as the Twi'lek. Anyway, Boba makes a very, very brief appearance as far as I know. Slave 1 randomly just flies in and shoots down Rihanna's ship on Tatooine and that's it. That's what happens. <laughs> Next is Star Wars Battlefront Renegade Squadron in 2007 exclusively on PSP. This is one of those games I really wish wasn't just a handheld exclusive. Gone are those days for the most part but this game featured both playable Boba Fett and Slave 1 and you can see right here you can actually defeat Slave 1 before Boba jumps off to light speed. Just like in Battlefront too, Boba also has his flamethrower in this game, and Boba also appeared in Elite Squadron in 2009, which is the sequel to this. A lot of people say it's a better game than this one, but as far as I know, Boba himself was pretty much the same in both games. Next, in 2007, is LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, and I am so glad whoever decided to make this did so, combining both LEGO Star Wars 1 and 2 into a single game. It's a genius idea. Boba Fett's pretty much the same as he is in LEGO Star Wars 2, Two only difference is the graphics are vastly improved, and I think his blaster looks a little different as well. 2008, the year of the backwards lightsaber, we had the Force Unleashed. Now, you can actually kill Boba in this game. I think it's an alternate timeline when Starkiller is leaving Jabba's palace. Boba will confront you, and you get to direct one of Boba's rockets back at him. And on the PSP version, you could also face Boba as Luke in the Dune Sea Historic Mission. And here you could throw Boba into the Sarlacc. Once again, a recurring theme. He belongs in there, like I said. Next, in 2010, one of Boba Fett's most iconic appearances in any video game. This is Pinball FX2. No disintegrations. As you wish which has a Boba Fett themed pinball table and some Boba Fett animations like him getting pulled into the Sarlacc once again, unless you save him by hitting the ball into the correct spot. In 2011, we had Lego Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars, where Boba could be unlocked as a mini kit character. Boba's minifigure is different in this game to what it was in Lego Star Wars 2 and the complete saga, more worn and dilapidated looking. The armor's a bit worn, you know, he's been wearing it for longer. Okay, just a heads up, the footage coming next might be harmful to some viewers. What even happened in 2012. We don't need to talk about this one. Man. In 2013, Boba could be seen in Star Wars Tiny Death Star. He comes and collects Han Solo. And in 2014, another mobile game which lasted less than a year before it was taken down was Star Wars Assault Team. Hey look, it's Boba Fett. You can probably see why this game didn't last because what you're seeing here is about all there is to it. Next is a game I really wish was still supported, Disney Infinity 3.0. Not only does this game have Boba Fett, you can 
also fly the Slave 1 and use Boba's jetpack to drop people into the Sarlacc pit. For once, he's not the one falling in, bringing home some buddies, just dropping them down there for when he, when he comes home later. You can fire Boba's rockets, his blaster, wrist rockets, go in and use some of those skills we learned in Masters of Terrace Kasi. I'd say so far this is the complete Boba Fett experience. It's really a shame Disney Infinity 4 never got released as well. Boba was supposed to be in that game also, that was confirmed. Okay, next is one of the big hitters. Also in 2015, Star Wars Battlefront, the EA reboot. This is back in the days when I was making Star Wars Battlefront machinima and short films. These are some of the first Star Wars videos I ever made, how I started on YouTube. You're not as smart as you think. Ah, uh, poodle. Probably the most advanced, detailed looking Boba we'd ever had in a video game at this point. Boba was equipped with a jetpack, rockets, flamethrower, E3 blaster, Tamura Morrison, and a whole lot of badass one-liners. Don't cross a professional. Am I supposed to bow? You're in over your head. How about you bow to me? As you wish. And then in 2016, Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens. Boba Fett could be unlocked as a bonus character by collecting carbonite bricks. And I'm pretty sure this is the same minifigure as in Lego Star Wars 3. I don't think they've updated him since. Next in 2017 is Star Wars Force Arena, the PvP mobile game. Boba could scale walls and use his jetpack in this, which I'm pretty sure other characters couldn't do. And then also in 2017, Star Wars Battlefront 2. This is the most advanced version of a playable Boba Fett to date. Boba comes with a concussion rocket, rocket barrage, radar reveal, his blaster, his jetpack, he can use a melee flamethrower attack. Boba is easily one of the best ranged characters in this game and there's also been dozens of Boba Fett mods created for this game, bringing to life other variations like his Star Wars 1313 appearance, Jango Fett and so much more. This is Boba Fett, the definitive edition right here. And then we have Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga in 2020. 2021. Both Boba Fett and Slave One will be playable and flyable in this game. And there you go. Did I miss anything? Any other appearances you remember Boba making? And what's your favorite Boba Fett video game? I really want to see child Boba Fett make an appearance at one point as well. That's the Star Wars game I'm looking for. That kid that said yep. Yep. If you click on one of these, you can watch one of my other Star Wars history videos and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and join my Discord. Come send me your favorite Boba Fett game and everything else. And thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew, I'll catch you soon. <laughs> Stay bombastic.